and if the distance is much smaller than uh, the wavelengths, this uh, kind of medium can be considered as a uh, kind of material or metamaterial. And then uh, uh, tailoring the spectral properties of this um, metamaterial can be done by creating uh, artificial elements in the form of um, um, very uh, small, um, smaller than the wavelengths resonators, which has been demonstrated in split rings. And some years ago, we were studying superconducting version of that, which opened uh, path to lower loss and tunability in frequency. And um, it's very natural also to consider using superconducting qubits for this purpose. So um, the uh, um, superconducting qubit uh, is a, a nonlinear system. Uh, in particular, transmond qubit is a weakly nonlinear system, and uh, it has an. Uh, one can um, uh, operate this um, nonlinear resonator in a, in a two-level um, fashion by driving the transition between zero and one levels. Um, the uh, uh, transmond qubits uh, have been used over the last uh, almost 20 years, um, a bit less. I think 2007 was the first name invented uh, in Yale Group. 15 years. So, um, and uh, basically they are um, made of uh, two Josephson junctions which form a squid, and then uh, these two junctions are shunted by capacitor, and basically this capacitor is rather macroscopic. You see the size uh, of this, uh, this is a real structure, uh, is uh, actually of the order of uh, more than 100 microns. Then by applying magnetic flux uh, to this squid, one can tune the energy level separation between the, uh, uh, the, the, sta the states of the of this qubit, and uh, that's basically due to the change of the Josephson energy of the uh, combined Josephson junction consisting of the two here. Um, so, the, uh, uh, as I already mentioned, the, uh, these qubits have been, of course, used uh, in, the, in many, many experiments and also being used for real uh, applications now. Uh, when they are coupled to a resonator, one can use the resonator frequency shift or phase shift to read out the states of those qubits. And uh, if one makes many of those qubits, then uh, one forms the so-called uh, uh, Davis-Cummings uh, um, Hamiltonian, where actually collective dynamics is also interesting to investigate. There have been a number of papers about that. So the subject of the talk uh, um, today, uh, I will, t will tell you some about something about experiments where this kind of qubits are also coupled to the uh, um, middle line where microwaves can propagate, but now it's not a resonator but rather a transmission line. So it's actually an open space, one-dimensional space, where these two-level systems interact with prop propagating light. Um, the Hamiltonian can be um, written in this form here, and this has been done by several, um, demonstrated by several uh, theory papers. That one can write the Hamiltonian for qubits, uh, for propagating photons, and the interaction between them. And then the photons' degree, degrees of freedom can be integrated out, and one is left with uh, effective interaction between the qubits, uh, which uh, is characterized by the collective decay, which is the cosine um, of, the, um, of the argument, which is, contains the distance between the qubit, qubits. And uh, there is also exchange interaction, which is a sign type. Actually, it can also change the sign depending on the distance. And uh, so far, experiments have been done with two and three qubits. Uh, and here, we sort of thought about going to more extended system and see what, uh, what actually happens. So um, the uh, um, calculation of the, um, um, the organization of the Hamiltonian in one photon manifold, manifold deal gives the eigenmodes, eigenfrequencies. And uh, um, there are, there are uh, of course, modes which are characterized by superradiant behavior and modes which are uh, characterized by subradiant behavior. And um, I will probably not discuss details because we will come to this picture a little later. So um, the uh, um, arrays of qubits uh, seen as quantum metamaterials have been um, mainly proposed in theory so far, uh, so far and uh, the pre predictions of uh, uh, so super and subradiance. One has um, also thought about uh, band gap engineering. There is a uh, systematic work ongoing uh, in the group of uh, Oscar Painter and Caltech. And uh, one can also use this uh, for a variety of other effects as generating non-classical light. One can entangle photons propagating in the transmission line uh, by uh, coupling them to qubits. So um, what is, of course, uh, uh, quite challenging is that those proposals, which uh, exist, multiple proposals which exist in literature, they require identical qubits. And it's uh, very uh, hard, of course, experimentally uh, to make them uh, identical. It's maybe impossible because uh, all the handmade objects 
macroscopic objects, they are slightly different from one another. But uh, just give it a try uh, uh, was, was interesting for us. So first thing we tried was actually making a chip with 90 qubits uh, coupled to transmission line. And then uh, we just looked at the propagating microwave signals through the uh, line. The qubits were uh, separated by distance in units of wavelengths, uh, which was quite small, smaller than wavelengths. And the uh, uh, lifetime of qubits was limited by the decay in the, um, in the transmission line. So it's not limited by internal, internal uh, coherence. Um, now, the, um, the array was very long, as I said, and the distance was uh, about three wavelengths. And uh, without showing much detail, I'll just flash this picture here that uh, as expected to be observed a band gap where the qubits uh, collectively absorb light. And uh, the saturation in this band gap uh, was significantly uh, higher power than uh, some of the single qubit signals, which were away uh, from the main band. So here were similar qubits and one was dissimilar and therefore the uh, saturation was at significantly lower power. So this is the only signature of quantum behavior that actually you saturate transi transition z um, zero one transition and then uh, the band gap ceases to exist. Uh, but of course you cannot do much because the qubits are not identical and this um, band gap which appears here is uh, limited by disorder. So to do this more systematically, understand really uh, details and comparing this with a real um, uh, Hamiltonian, we went back and uh, designed a system where uh, we uh, coupled only eight qubits to transmission line, but now all those qubits were uh, frequency tunable, so we can actually tune them to the same frequency one by one and then see the results of interaction. And a single qubit coupled to transmission line was first studied by um, uh, Alek Astafiev and co-authors uh, in NEC lab in Japan, where they actually observed uh, the, uh, um, uh, the major phenomena, which is the um, a photon reflection from the qubit with opposite phase. So basically, there is a uh, extinction in transmission of the, uh, of the, uh, of the light uh, at the frequency of the qubit, but the photons are not absorbed. They are reflected back with opposite phase, and therefore, um, the signal doesn't propagate. But of course, if you increase the power, then, then uh, the uh, transition gets saturated, and there are more photons. But of course, obviously, saturation power for many qubits should be higher than a saturation power of one qubit. So uh, this is an example of um, uh, single qubit data, uh, very similar to data of uh, um, Astafiev. And we basically reach here extinction, which is uh, over 99%. So the qubits are very, very strongly coupled. And nearly all the photons which come to the qubit at the transition frequency get reflected back. And you see the dip in the transmission here, uh, and then corresponding change of the phase. And then one can fit and get all the parameters from the circle fit um, uh, on the uh, complex plane. Now. Um, let us add more and more qubits and see what happens. Now we add the second qubit to the same frequency and we see that the resonant line changes the, uh, the, the profile. We get three qubits, we see the appearance of a sharp peak. And then if we add four, this peak becomes sharper. And when we get all eight qubits, uh, then we see actually the emergence of another peak uh, at the bottom here. So what we see in fact here, the whole band gap is a uh, superradiant state of, of all the qubits while the sharp peaks are signatures of the uh, dark states. And uh, this is uh, confirmed by performing Lindblad simulations of this system, uh, where we can actually get a very nice uh, comparison uh, with experimental data. You see this uh, brown line uh, nicely represents what we have measured in, in real data. Um, then uh, it's good to characterize the collective decay, but for that, uh, more convenient is to look at the reflection signal. So here you see the um, measurements in reflection, and then uh, one can identify here this broad resonance, which is the uh, superradiant mode, and then one of the dark modes, this subradiant mode, uh, is appearing as a uh, very sharp cusp there. So by measuring the, the widths of these um, subradiant modes, one can actually compare the predictions uh, with theory and um, it's a, there is interesting scaling of the uh, uh, darker superradiant uh, state line widths uh, as a number of qubits in the power n to minus three, which is also consistent with uh, scaling of the, um, uh, of the predictions of those uh, papers down there. It's not the main subject of my talk because time is limited. I think I will uh, go over to more interesting slides now. So the collective decay is there and the agreement with theories is quite, uh, 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 quite convincing. Now we have eight qubits, which are separated by, uh, by fraction of wavelengths. And then uh, when we add more and more qubits, now the number of qubits is uh, shown here on vertical axis, uh, one to, to eight. Um, then we see the appearance of this band gap. Now the color is the uh, transmission amplitude, and the dark color is basically no transmission. 
And then the crosses are the predictions of the, uh, of the eigenmode um, of the, the canalization of the Hamiltonian and uh, the uh, um, limiting uh, widths of this band gap for infinitively long uh, metamaterial with this, with this fixed spacing between the qubits uh, is about six times three uh, widths of the um, decay limited um, uh, single qubit uh, line widths. But in our case, because of the finite lengths of the system, we observed the widening only by factor roughly two uh, compared to the single qubit um, um, resonance. Um, this is uh, the signature that actually uh, the uh, setup works and we could also identify uh, the good agreement with uh, calculation when we, for example, fix uh, seven qubits at particular frequency and then tune the qubit number eight through this collective resonance and observing the emergence and the disappearance of uh, particular lines, uh, which uh, actually has uh, uh, um, good agreement with theory. So um, the um, phenomena which I explained so far uh, were uh, expected in a single photon manifold. That means actually they could be explained for a fully classical model, which is harmonic oscillator. Now the quantum, uh, quantumness of the system uh, gets uh, recognized by uh, saturation, which uh, you could see on this plot. For one qubit, uh, it's about um, 100 minus 123, while for eight qubits, it's um, well above uh, minus uh, 120. So this is the, the difference in saturation power, uh, which actually tells that you need uh, eight times more photons uh, to saturate eight qubits compared to a single qubit. Uh, but it's not really um, well uh, appreciated uh, quantumness. Saturation is, of course, also uh, something which is not exactly direct. More direct phenomenon uh, would be demonstration of the phenomenon known in atomic physics, which is Otley -ton tones uh, splitting. And in this case, uh, you apply a uh, control tone, which um, drives the transition between the first excited and the second excited state. And this uh, drive addresses the first excited state. So there is a splitting of the state. Uh, and then uh, the splitting can be um, seen in the spectrum of the, um, of the system. And a uh, similar, uh, similar phenomenon was observed um, um, by Astafiev's group um, over 10 years ago, but now we have eight qubits rather than one qubit, and I uh, want to, um, to get the collective dynamics there. So what we, um, we then uh, observe uh, is the splitting when we apply this control tone, the single peak splits in two, and this is the signature which is uh, known from um, Otleton's phenomenon in atomic physics. Now, um, the cal calculation shows uh, the uh, uh, collective dynamics, while in experiment we see that actually the, um, the, the line is split into a few more lines. And uh, currently we believe that these additional lines, which don't agree with the simulation, are due to the fact that by, uh, by having eight qubits, not all of them are identical. So if you tune the, the transition between zero and one to the same frequency, it doesn't mean that the transition between one and two is the same because they're physically different. And therefore, uh, the, and we actually know the qubit which was uh, a bit off uh, resonance uh, when we observe this uh, splitting. So uh, next thing um, we do, we uh, try to use this uh, very sharp uh, feature in the middle of the uh, transmission, which is a very narrow band with almost flat dispersion here to demonstrate slowing of the uh, electromagnetic waves similarly to uh, the phenomena which is, um, um, which is uh, studied in atomic physics and also uh, in, in other systems. So basically by applying different uh, drive, um, drive up amplitude, we can widen the gap here. We can widen the gap from very small to wider and wider. And here one would expect the slowest light while if you move in this direction, increasing the control power, the velocity of propagating electromagnetic waves should uh, basically um, uh, increase. So um, the slope um, of the dispersion here is uh, giving us the, uh, the group velocity. And uh, we see that this dashed line actually uh, changes the slope as uh, uh, I just ex explained, explained by words. So um, then we, uh, we have done uh, real measurements here and we have uh, here on this plot several cuts. Uh, one cut is right there, the other cut is, is here and they, uh, basically the, the, the gap is opening uh, at larger power. And then uh, from the slope in the dispersion, this is the, uh, basically the real data taken uh, from amplitude in the phase. So this is uh, uh, the dashed line which characterizes the um, inverse group velocity. And uh, we see that uh, we could extract basically from this uh, dispersion uh, indirectly the uh, information about the uh, decay of the uh, light propagation of the system. 
And this is the uh, agreement for seven qubits. We took seven because uh, the eight qubit was, uh, was actually this line, which we didn't like in the overtone splitting. So, um, and the agreement um, between data and simulations is, is really good. I will skip some discussion of the theory, uh, which can be found now in this, in this paper here. Now, uh, let me move over to a more uh, experimental way of claiming that. In addition to doing um, the spectral analysis, we also measured the real delay of pulse propagation. So we were sending pulses with few photons through this line, and then uh, by changing from one point to another, we were hoping to measure the real uh, delay of the um, light propagation. And here you see uh, that uh, uh, by uh, changing the power, uh, we, we see the change of the, of the shape of the line. So this is the um, amplitude and this is the uh, time. Uh, you know, the bits of pulses is compressed here by a factor of 20 just to be, be able to compare them. So they're, they're on the scale of, uh, uh, of uh, a couple of uh, tens of nanoseconds and more. Uh, the, uh, um, it's actually we used for this example, we use 50 nanosecond pulse, pulse widths. Now it's important also to, uh, to say that we cannot go very deep into this cusp here because we need for the particular pulse widths, we need a particular um, widths and dispersion. So there is a certain um, um, widths of this, uh, of this pulse in the Fourier space. And therefore uh, we could only start uh, from the time which is roughly one over the pulse duration, from the frequency which is one over the pulse duration. So, um, Moving over to real data, these are the uh, delay, delays of the pulses measured uh, in real, um, in real um, setup by measuring the pulse propagation velocity. And these points actually also nicely agree with points which we measured indirectly from the spectrum. So the group uh, indices, the group velocity is reduced by a factor of uh, almost 1,500 uh, and uh, time resolved experiments um, also demonstrate that. So I think my time is over, I go to conclusion. So all these beautiful uh, measurements were done by uh, a single person. This is uh, Jan Brem, who recently graduated in my group. A brilliant guy and actually did very systematic and uh, um, focused work on this, this experiment. Um, basically we uh, have uh, demonstrated the metamaterial with fully controllable eight qubits. We observed uh, uh, the um, emergence of the polaritonic gap. Uh, we observed uh, a sub, uh, and, uh, super radiant states and also scaling of the, uh, um, of the collective decay. And uh, also measured the uh, slowing light uh, with group indices uh, up to uh, over 1,000. And uh, if you want to learn more about these experiments, there have been uh, those two papers. This is a paper coming out shortly in uh, Applied Physics Letters. So thanks for your attention. Thank you for a nice talk, and uh, right now, the questions. Thank you very much for your nice and really impressive work. And uh, could you uh, comment in more detail about a possibility to use these uh, waveguides with qubits for lasing? I, I saw one, one graph, but um, what are the perspectives? Or they are designed for something else? If not, then uh, what could be perspectives of the structures as lasers? Thank you. Well, for lasing, you need uh, typically uh, a particular structure of level, uh, lambda system, which is not the case for these qubits, right? So they have this uh, uh, structure which is which is not exactly for that. And then you also need to have certain uh, lifetime of particular states which you need to pump the energy into the, into the system before you start the observing the lasing. I, I know that uh, similar experiments are going on now in Astafiev's group where they work with different qubits uh, in order to implement the lasing. But lasing with these qubits again was uh, actually an experiment I would refer to the old work almost 20 years ago where they've been able to see uh, single atom lasing. Uh, and this is, I think, the paper published uh, NEC group uh, about 18 years ago, around that. So uh, it's possible, but of course you need a particular level structure and also a particular combination of lifetime. In, in some cases you need to sort of tailor the decay uh, to be able to observe the lasing, but this is possible, yeah. What do you consider the main uh, application of this structure? I think the main application of this structure uh, uh, there are two. So one is, uh, is creating uh, non-classical light. That's basically producing uh, entanglement between propagating photons and, uh, and qubits. 
And the second is uh, it can be also alternative architecture for quantum computing, one where one could have coupling all to all. And there is a recent paper from, uh, from Caltech where they advertise it and also show some data in a bit different setting where they make dispersion engineering using a chain of resonators. But basically, you have uh, qubits, uh, they will interact with one another if you are in the um, um, transmission gap, where in, 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 the, in, the, in the band, in the band. But if you tune the qubits away uh, in the um, band gap, then they don't interact with each other. So there is a um, possibility to explore this uh, architecture and eventually implement some, some interesting quantum algorithms. Thank you. Another question. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, what is the role of dissipation? Uh, is it uh, some bound for the temperature of the system or do you allow for dissipation? Uh, dissipation is there, of course, and uh, dissipation um, shows, uh, um, um, actually is, is reflected in the contrast of observation of the dark states. So we are limited by intrinsic dissipation and therefore we cannot see all the dark states. Some of them have very, uh, very long uh, lifetime, but then uh, the system doesn't uh, live in this time because the, the system intrinsically decay. So, and dissipation is, is limited by the mechanism which we discussed today uh, in the talk of uh, Professor Siddiqui, where actually he has shown different mechanisms which contribute to the, uh, to the um, losses in, in superconducting qubits. And uh, for these particular qubits, uh, we were not really in the regime of, of uh, hundreds of microseconds. I think the characteristic uh, lifetime of the qubits alone was in the range of few microseconds. But it was limited by coupling to the line. And therefore, it wasn't critical for these experiments. It only prevented observing of um, some, some really deep dark states. Thank you. Actually, I have a question about the <laughs> this uh, gap or some region on this picture, delta omega, and uh, how it depends on uh, inter interaction with, uh, between qubits uh, and resonator? Or uh, there is transmission, no or transmission line. Uh, transmission line, and is it possible to uh, vary this? Uh, well, the coupling of qubits to the line is fixed. We do not change the coupling constant. Therefore, the, um, the line width of individual qubit is just fixed by design. Mm. But of course, if you change the, the distance between the qubits, then of course the, the width of the, of, the, of the band also changes. Mm -hmm. And if you have uh, then very, very long, uh, long chain, then um, I mean, it's again not tunable because uh, you basically need to redesign the whole array. Uh, or maybe detune some qubits away, and then you will have on less qubits, mm. but still fixed with the same fraction of the line bits. So I would guess uh, the, there is a, uh, not much in this kind of layout, there is not, not much freedom to tune this, uh, these parameters. Thank you. 